What's up, Duval? It's Bucky Brooks, your favorite Jaguar, and this is Believe in Jags, Believe in Jaguars, a podcast dedicated to all things Jacksonville Jaguars. And we're really excited because we are on the eve of the second preseason game of the 2024 campaign. Uh, The Jacksonville Jaguars are welcoming in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for their second preseason game. They spent a couple days uh, at the Miller Electric uh, Center uh, doing some joint practices. So this should be a very intriguing game to watch because most of the starters are going to sit out. This is a young player showcase, which should be really, really fascinating as we're beginning to narrow in on who's going to be on the roster. So I'm going to give you five little things to watch uh, while you're checking out this game on Saturday. I'll be on the call in the booth with Brian Sexton. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. So before we get into this preview, let's uh, shout out our sponsor. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. From preseason NFL to college kicking off, Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while games are being played. Think you know your stuff? Get in on our winner take all 300,000 NFL survival pool this upcoming season. When the game is over, Head on over to our online casino, get in on a pair, get in on a game of blackjack or poker, or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today, use promo code Believe, B L E A V, and get in on the action. Bet online, the game starts here. And I feel like we said because that tagline always talks about the game starting here. Well, guys, the game is about to start. The second game is on the horizon. The Jaguars are taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And What's great about this week, um, the Jaguars got an opportunity really to get the best of both worlds. They were able to get some quality work against a really good opponent, a playoff team that, I mean, going back to last season, really kicked their tails uh, in December, like really put it on them. And look, I'm sure it left a bad taste in their mouth. And even though this is preseason, it doesn't really um, count. But it certainly matters when you look at it. And even though Doug Peterson and those guys talked about not game planning, You always want to go back and kind of uh, make amends for the things that may have gone wrong the previous season. Even though this is a set of preseason practices where you're not game planning and doing those things, it is a chance to take on someone who you know, um, you've tasted their power, you've dealt with their physicality, you understand they're a really good team, particularly on defense. They have a quarterback and a star-studded cast of playmakers on offense. So there's a lot of good work that can be done. And Watching these practices, coaches should have a solid evaluation of the starters because uh, we talked about it, playing in a controlled environment where you put your team in various situations so you can evaluate how guys do in certain dealing with certain circumstances. It's all positive. And because it's controlled where the quarterback's not getting hit, uh, you have quick whistles in a third tempo, uh, you're able to get some of the benefits from playing in a preseason game, but an environment that is more conducive to keeping your guys healthy and away from uh, injury. Uh, The reports that I have heard regarding both of the practices, um, pretty solid for the Jaguars on both days. I will say the first day the reports we're talking about uh, getting knocked around, pushed around, particularly the Jags offensive line in dealing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. But part of it is to be expected if you're not game planning. Uh, Vita Vea is a monster. I mean, a, a mountain of a man on the interior. And so he gave us some problems on the inside. And then just what they do defensively in terms of like how they move, stunt, angle, blitz, uh, they look, they give you a lot to think about. And if you're not game planning for them, it really can be very, very difficult for you to have a lot of success, particularly on the ground. Uh, and then like trying to figure out how do you find those open windows in their zone blitz coverage. Uh, so they, they, Look, the reports were it was up and down that first day, but then day two was was much better by all accounts. Like you talked about the defense, the Jags defense continuing to step up and make plays. Um, reports of three interceptions, maybe a fourth one that was dropped by Buster Brown. Uh, but Andre Cisco continues to be Johnny on the spot when it uh, when it comes down to making plays. And this defense has been a very, very productive defense thus far. And I know we're not game planning. I know we haven't seen what teams are really going to do. But I can tell you, as this team continues to have success in these practices and joint practices in particular, confidence continues to build with with each day. 
And there's a trust that they're beginning to have in their coaching staff that, man, this defense is not only right for us, but this coach might know what he's talking about when he was saying um, the things that they were going to emphasize in the offseason because they're emphasizing those things and those things are kind of coming to fruition. So what it does is it strengthens the bond and more guys are more likely to really buy in when the next thing is talked about or discussed or they want to put a tweak in a personnel package in and those things. So all that stuff is, is really, really positive uh, on offense is still look, the offensive line is going to really dictate and determine how well this team does. They can play with a leaky offensive line and put up nine, 10 wins just on the talent on the perimeter and the quarterback and those things. But if they want to be a team that gets to 12 wins, 13 wins, the offensive line is going to have to show up to the party and they got to show up to the party with bad intentions. Um, it's one of the things that when you have an opportunity to practice against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you get a chance to see what's really real based on the personnel that they have on the front line, because they can challenge you inside with their physicality, their toughness, their superior size and length. Um, they really are able to force you to make adjustments or you reveal where you could be weak at, and it becomes a conversation within the coaching staff. Hey, if we meet a team that's like that, that has personnel inside that can give us problems, how are we going to handle it so we can be a team that is very productive against all comers? All comers. So this is uh, one, this is a week where, look, it's great teaching tape. It's also great evaluating tape for coaches because what they have to do is they have to not only evaluate the players, but they have to evaluate the scheme against that type of defense, would they be better served to do something a little differently if they had a matchup against the Buccaneers um, down the line? So this is one of those things that you like uh, to walk away with feeling good about your team and those things. So when we're going into the preseason, uh, every game you want to be very intentional. As a coach, you want to be very intentional about what your goals are for the game. Uh, you're talking about team, about playing hard and taking care of the ball and ball security and those things. But there are also some research projects that you are being that, that are being done while you're watching the game. And so what I want to do is I want to uh, give you five things that I'm going to look for when I look at this team step out on Saturday against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And all of this is kind of done from a scouting perspective just so I can go in there with my notebook, with some things already ready to look for. So I come away with some answers uh, to some of the things that I believe could be problems down the line. So the first thing that I think we want to look for when we're looking at this preseason game, one is week two is against a really good team. And we may have a bunch of young players playing, but the standard doesn't change on offense, defense, or special teams. On offense, we want to watch how does this offense flow? How does it flow with backups in the game? How does it flow with Press Taylor continue to be on the sideline, working through the mechanics of calling plays from a bird's eye view as opposed to being up top? Like that, those things, how they're going to handle all of those uh, conversations and interactions with players, with staff, and those things. So I just want to see can this offense get into a flow without number 16 and out some of the notable names? on the perimeter. This is a great opportunity, and we'll talk about Mac Jones in a little bit, but it's a great opportunity for Mac Jones to show his teammates and the coaching staff that he absolutely has command of the offense and that if you needed to give him an opportunity to start, he certainly can step up. And you can say the same things about C.J. Beathard, even though you still have a good feel for what Beathard is based on how he performed last season when he got his things. So offensive flow is one part of that. Uh, uh, question or evaluation. The second part is defensive execution. The reason why the defensive part of it is about execution is because when you elect to have a very simplistic scheme, execution is everything. Ryan Nielsen is willing to bank that our job isn't to trick the opponent. Our job is to ex out execute the opponent. Everyone knows we're going to play a handful of coverages, uh, whether it's man free, cover two, three, whatever that is. Everyone knows that it's going to be on tape. People are going to see us live in those things. However, can people understand we're able to succeed because of how well we do those things? Our effort, our energy, attention to detail, all of that matters. So for me, as I'm looking at this game, I'm looking to see if the offense can find a, a flow really quickly with one of the quarterbacks, whether it's Mac Jones or C.J. Beathard. 
And then the other thing I want to see is defensively, can the execution continue to be at a high level? Heard about it through the practice week, have seen some of it up close and personal by being at practices. Defense looks different. There's a different vibe and energy, but none of that matters if they don't put that on tape consistently because no one is going to buy into them being a top defense until they consistently show people they can get stops at any time, at any point, and eventually change the tide of the game, change the momentum of the game with the plays that they make on defense. So execution is everything. Let's see what this team looks like, what it feels like. When you click off the TV at the end of the game, do you feel positive about the way the team performs? So that's number one. Number two, is Mac Jones really QB2? Uh, during the preseason, you know, like they've talked about the quarterback competition. C.J. Beathard has been kind of ushered in as the backup quarterback. He had success when he got a chance to play last season. So you know that he can come in, get you out of a game, get you to the winner's circle if you need to, but you may be limited in terms of how you do it. That probably led the Jaguars to kind of kick the, th- the you know, kick the tires on Mac Jones when he was being offered and available to see if you can upgrade the number two position. Uh, I'll say this, like we can talk about every team has 22 starters and those guys are important, but that backup quarterback to me is like a 20th or 21st starter. His value surpasses some of the value of the starters that you have on the field on offense, defense, and those things. And so it's really important in a league where quarterbacks get bumped and knocked around and banged and bruised and may miss a game or two, that number two quarterback uh, becomes a huge deal. So for me, and watching Mac Jones, and you know, I'm surprised people really didn't talk about it. Man, he was outstanding against the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, look, he might have been 9 over 11, did a really good job moving the ball up and down the field. Uh, when you watch him play, you can see, one, the pedigree, that he was a first-round pick because the arm talent suggested he's a first-round pick, just the way that he spends it in comparison to some of the others. Two, he's a former Pro Bowl. He's had success in this league. He's won uh, games in this league, and he's been a guy who has been hailed and celebrated as a guy who kind of can get into the winner's circle. Uh, the other part of it, Mac Jones, that I feel like he got some moxie and a vibe that people buy into. His confidence when you see him in practice, it, it stands out, it pops. And then in games, guys, guys kind of rally behind him. So what I want to see is against a defense that really throws a lot at you, does Mac Jones have the ability to carve up this defense? Because remember, he's a former first rounder and a veteran quarterback playing against backups and newbies. Is tilted in his favor. Let's see if he can deliver on some of those things uh, because he's older, wiser, more mature, and maybe just a better player than some of the guys that he's going to face on Saturday. So that's the second thing you want to watch. Uh, for me, the third thing, which youngsters are going to emerge uh, on the big stage under the bright lights? Last week, we saw Parker Washington. We saw Tank Bigsby. We saw Chad Muma. All of those guys make a handful of plays that you're like, okay, maybe the light is coming on. Uh, It typically takes three years to determine whether a guy can play in this league from a scouting standpoint. So for some of these guys, we're nearing that time where they should be able to kind of pop out and make things uh, happen. So I am looking to see, well, who's the next set of guys that are going to step out and make some plays and do it? And so I'm going to tell you, going into the game, I have my eyes on uh, a couple guys on defense and one guy on offense. On defense, I'm looking at Buster Brown. Uh, Monterey, Buster Brown, to me, is finally in a defense that really works to his skill set. Part of that is because, look, he's a really feisty and aggressive bump and run corner. We had an opportunity last year to see him play in big moments the way that he played in uh, New Orleans on a Thursday night, came up with big plays to get off the field to finish the game. You want that Buster Brown to show up, and more importantly, you want to see him get into rotation and make some things happen. Uh, Yarsir Abdullah is another one that I'm excited to see have his opportunity to play a full game and see if he can impact the game as a pass rusher. All offseason, we talked about Josh Allen. We talked about Trayvon Walker. We talked about what Eric Armstead can add. But really, this team has to find some other guys in the bullpen that can complement what those those fellas uh, that we're talking about can do. Someone that can be a situational rusher, someone that can come off um, you know, the bench and kind of heat up and give you a quick sack or two just because his speed, explosive, his power, whatever that is. Yasir Abdullah is one of those guys that you want to keep an eye on because he flashed that during his time as a collegian. Can those skills, can that translate to success in the National Football League? That's what we want to check out. We want to see if he can do it. Offensively, 
Uh, I'm looking at the tight end position. Uh, we've talked so much about Evan Ingram. We've talked about the wide receivers that the Jaguars have and how they basically are like a basketball team. But I'm going to tell you, they still need another big body that can do damage over the middle of the field. Brenton Strange is the one that I, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on because, look, he's a super athlete coming out of Penn State. Like you, you saw the athleticism. You saw the talent and the tools. You just have not seen it all put together. Uh, we're looking now. This is an opportunity for him to stand up, you know, show out, make some plays, um, kind of earn the confidence of the offensive coaches so then they can begin to put little things on the play sheet to be like, hey, man, let's make sure we get him the ball and see if he can make some magic happen when he has the ball in his hands. So Buster Brown, Yasir Abdullah, Brenton Strange, eyes. My eyes are on you because I need you guys to stand out, make me feel better about the team because if they show out, man, you feel like the depth is going to be at the right spot uh, based on those three guys and, and their potential contributions down the line. Uh, fourth thing that you want to look at, uh, to me, this is an O-line evaluation. Uh, if you don't play these starters and you're going to go with the backups, you're going to have 60 minutes to evaluate what you have in the closet, meaning what, what kind of backups do you have? What what uh, players can eventually emerge and get into the rotation and be quality, dependable, rotational slash spot starters that can help you continue to win if you have injuries up front. First name is always the name that is mentioned, and I'm anticipating playing, and that's Walker Little. Uh, Walker Little is now nearing the point of his career where he's either going to have to be good enough to be a starter or you're going to have to get going and kind of find a way to improve that position. He's been around for too long to kind of um, occupy a spot as a swing player. At some point, man, you want to feel good about him and his ability to be a starter. So I want to see him play well. I want to see him step up and show that he not only has the talent to be a dominant player uh, in the league, but look, he has it inside, that he has the toughness, he has the attention to detail and guts to kind of battle on the perimeter when he may be the underdog based on the, the player that's on the other side. But will he play like a junkyard dog? Will he scrap? Will he claw? Will he do those things? I want to see more of that from Mark a little. The other guys I want to see, I want to see Blake Hance. Uh, Look, there's going to be a huge need on the interior at some point. Brandon Scherf is near the end of his career. We've seen other injuries on the interior. Blake Hans has to be ready to go because he's the next one right off the bench. He has to jump in there and be ready to play. I want to see how he fares against the likes of Vita, not Vita Vea, but some of the young guys that uh, the Buccaneers have that can throw at you while bringing a lot of pressure from everywhere. So he's certainly one to watch. Blake Hans, um is another one we talked about to watch. And the final one is like Luke Fortner. Like I know we've kind of written his epitaph and said that it's, hey, it's, it's over with. The obituary is already written and submitted. Uh, we don't think he's going to play again because Mitch Morris was uh, brought in and uh, put into the lineup, but you just never know. And so you got to make sure that he can hold up and do the things that like, everyone wants him to do. He hasn't been physical enough. He's He's been inconsistent when it comes to technique, but – Look, it was certainly there. There's a reason why he was one of the top picks in the draft, and there's a reason why he was brought to Jacksonville. Now, he has to uh, affirm that the belief that people have given in him is is going to be reciprocated because he's going to play at a level that makes you feel good about that. As a backup right now, he has to continue to approach the game like a starter and be ready because you just don't know when your numbers call. I want to see his preparedness and his performance. Is he prepared to play? Does he perform at a level where he's worthy of playing? If he does, then he can fall in line with Blake Hans and Walker Little as three young guys to get a jersey each week. And even though they're sitting on the side, they're valuable members of the team because at any moment, they can jump on the field and have to go. Uh, The final thing that I'm looking at when it comes to the Jaguars in this preseason game, man, I'm looking to see if Cam Little can continue to work his magic as a place kicker. Uh, Cam Little was drafted. Out of Arkansas, everyone talked about the big leg and he can knock it through. He's a distance kicker, all of those things. But until you see it, you really don't believe it. Uh, I'm a believer right now. I'm a believer because during the game on Saturday, he was nails, uh, knocking him through, and I would say intermediate range. But then the miss that he had, the 62-yarder, which was really unprompted, no one saw that he was going to be that guy. He's just off the mark. The leg is plenty strong. The reason why Cam Little's range And his performance is so important because it changes the way that you may call the game as a play caller. For instance, if he's comfortable in the like the 50 
yard range. If he goes up to 52, 55 or whatever, but now you open it up where you can kind of start uh, doing some things differently offensively because, you know, hey, whenever we get to the, the 35 yard line, it's guaranteed to put points on the board. Imagine how aggressive you can be when you know that those things are there. And worst case, if you have to settle for the check down, it's cool. We may not get the full seven, but we get three. And we just keep if we just keep stacking those chips, eventually you'll win at the end. Well, Cam Little's a big part of the strategy because if he is consistent from, let's just say, 55 yards and in, it just shrinks the field um, for the offense in terms of where do I need to get to to be able to score points. That is a huge key. That's a huge addition. And if they're able to find Cam Little and kind of solidify where his range is, why he's being so consistent like he's been all offseason, uh, all preseason, man, it's a game changer because it just opens up the way that Doug Peterson and Press Taylor attack opponents and go after it. So this is a huge thing. It's one of those things that we're going to keep an eye on, Cam Little's range. And then I got one more little bonus, little bonus thing. Let's continue to look at the kickoff and the kickoff return. After last week, I'm going to say this, Parker Washington was the first one to go to go big. He goes he goes busy, 74 yards. Then you think about Tank Bigsby going 40-plus yards on his return. Everyone is going to make adjustments to what the Jaguars did last week. I'm looking to see what are the adjustments to the adjustments if you're Heath Farwell. What kind of things can you cook up to help these young playmakers make big plays in the kicking game? Because if he has some other things, he has some other cards that he can uh, throw out there to get everybody off the scent. This team is going to benefit from their kicking game, flipping the field and eventually putting points on the board because they're so good in the return game and they've been very, very aggressive and consistent about how they want to get it done. So there you have it. There are the five things that I'm looking for in week two's game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Should be a lot of fun. Join me and Brian Sexton on the call. Uh, I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast because my excitement is in watching the young guys have opportunities and cash in on those opportunities as they earn elevated roles in their second, third season. So uh, make sure you continue to tune in to the podcast rate review subscribe uh do all those things wherever you get your podcast uh make sure you check out my colleagues on the at believe network uh some of the great stuff that we're doing not only on youtube but on fubo also check out some of those podcasts we talk about being able to know what the enemy is talking about we'll check on some of those things we got a tough slate uh on the horizon where we're going to take on the miami dolphins and the cleveland browns early I might want to kind of tune in and see what they're saying about their own team to see if there's some weaknesses, some liabilities that we want to exploit. Uh, So that's it. I'm Bucky Brooks. This is Believe in Jaguars. This was a fun episode, uh, kind of sharing some thoughts. Make sure you leave comments uh, at Bucky Brooks on Twitter, using on the YouTube channel, whatever it is, I'll see it. And if it's good enough, I'll respond to it on the next pod. Until then, I'm Bucky Brooks and I'm